Hey, welcome back. Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 90. It's Monday, January 23rd. Um, we've missed the last couple weeks with Monday briefings. We've just been kind of busy. If you follow us on Instagram, you've probably seen it. We've been doing a lot of tooling last week. Um, we did quite a bit of tooling on the one of the saddles that I'm building. We're building two. I'll show you those, kind of how far along they are and, and kind of where we're at on them. But we did, um, you might have seen on, on there, we were tooling everything from the breast collar um, to the billets. We got the fenders tooled. This is a three-quarter floral saddle the one that we're building and so the fenders are tooled we'll kind of go through that here in a minute the housings there's quite a bit of tooling on there um, I had a lot of people ask how much tooling time was that for those pieces that's everything on this saddle um, I actually have been keeping track of the time on this um, for probably one of the first times in my career usually I just kind of judge it and just kind of guess it was pretty neat because I actually kept like a log there of every every um, hour that I spent you know tooling and from layout to carbon to tooling, all of it together for all the pieces on this saddle that we've tooled up to this point, uh, which I think the only thing I'm lacking right now is the front um, or the swells. And right there, I've got 30, right at 31 hours, 30.75 or something like that. So right at 31 hours worth of tooling is involved in that. Now that's including the design work or the drawing of the of the pattern. A lot of people won't count that. They just count the tooling time and that's it. And they just figure the drawing time, that's just, so that you can't charge for that. I disagree. And I think that we all need to kind of think about that a little bit when we are bidding out our projects um, that drawing time is part of your craft. And so if you're not charging for the drawing time somewhere, you have to figure out some way to, um, you know, if it's a, a replicated pattern that you're gonna use a lot over and over, then you're paying for that investment of creating that pattern that then you can use on multiple projects over over so many years in your career before you uh, discontinue that pattern or whatnot, um, then that's different. But if you're designing a pattern specifically for one customer that is a one-off, that kind of deal, I think that that customer's the one that needs to invest in that design time. Um, because especially like on saddles and that kind of thing, that's not something you're gonna be able to use that pattern again um, with for the most part. I don't, I, I usually draw all new patterns for saddles when we build them. I very rarely go through, I may do one that's similar, but it's not like I make tracings of all of these patterns. I draw directly on the leather in particular and then we do the tap off like the video that posted last week. I showed you how to tap off a large pattern like this onto the uh, the other side or the, uh, the, the right side fender um, and that way you can get it get it transferred. So with me doing that, I don't even have a copy of this pattern. This pattern is tooled now, it's done. When this saddle leaves, I don't have a copy of it. So uh, there's no way for me to replicate it identically. So usually every one of my saddles is a very unique pattern that, uh, that I haven't used before. Um, it may be similar to something else I've done, but it's not the exact same pattern. So with doing that, um, you know, I figure that's one of those deals where we probably need to keep track of our time on stuff like that and not just count drawing time as something that we can't charge for. Because I think you most definitely need to charge for it or consider it an investment for something that you're going to replicate over time. Um, like say a belt pattern, you're going to create a tap off. You can spend all day long drawing that pattern out and getting it fine tuned and getting it right where you want it because then you're going to use that tap off on multiple belts. That's one of the patterns that you're going to offer. That's a pattern that many customers are going to choose and pick out. And that's you investing in that. Um, so technically, you're paying for that time. But for one-off pieces and design work and things like that, the drawing is the art. The tooling is just bringing that artwork to life. So something to kind of consider, something to kind of look at as we go into 2023. I hope your year is starting off really, really good. I hope you've uh, getting some orders. Uh, I've talked to a few of y'all or a few few people that I know, you know, guys that follow our stuff and things else on the phone. And um, they say they're busy. Everybody seems to be busy and people are still ordering and that kind of thing. So that's a great sign. That's a great sign for this year. Hopefully that continues. Um, one of the things before we get too far into this year, we all can't forget about, and that's inventory. And um, sadly, Claudia saw that I had printed out the inventory sheets um, last week when she came in. And so she's already started doing some of the inventory out there on the sales floor. She usually handles the retail stuff for me since she knows the colors and what they're called and all that. Um, and that actually makes it easy with our system because I just print an entire inventory list for her and it should agree with what's on the sales floor. And she can go through there and just check them, make sure that those numbers are correct. And so that inventory goes pretty quick. 
As far as the inventory in the shop, I usually handle that. We've talked about this some last year, maybe the year before, um, and I don't go into super detail. Everybody's got to figure out their own way to do inventory on what you count, um, how you count it, how do you keep up with it. But um, I just print off some of these grid sheets here. I just created this file in uh, Excel or numbers or whatever you want to use. Just create something where you can write down the item number if it does have an item number, like out of the Weaver catalog or something like that, where you can find it easily. A description of what the item is and then um, you know maybe a type like if you've got different types of brass or whatever you can kind of break that down if you want and then how many there are what the cost per unit is and then you can have your totals running on the outside I do all of my inventory with pencil um, I just go through and I count everything and I write it all in here and I add everything up with a calculator it's easier for me um, to make sure as small as our shop is even though we're, we've grown a lot in the last couple of years um, especially on the, what we keep in inventory for you guys on the website. Um, that's changed a lot, but I still find it easier for me just to write it down. I'm very analog anyway when it comes to that. Um, I've got my notebook here and I write everything down as far as what I need to do in a day. If somebody calls and needs something, I write it down. Um, it's not a foolproof plan. Things get lost, things get misplaced, but in general, um, that's my, my best way. If I put it in my phone or put it on like a calendar, a digital calendar, it's usually gone. I, I don't ever look at that again. So um, so the inventory works best for me just to handwrite it, count everything, add everything up. Again, like we talked about in the last video, the last Monday video, and probably last year, getting a good handle on how much inventory you actually maintain in your shop year to year is really, really gonna help you dial in your books and get those right. So let's focus on that. But, but before we get too far into the year and everybody gets busy and running crazy and working on big jobs and, and big projects and things and some shows that are coming up um, just want to kind of remind you let's go do inventory early if, if you can and that way it's done and then when we get to April that part's done because that's usually the hardest part of doing your taxes um, if you're in the not United States doing your taxes is usually just your inventory and your business stuff um, your business books and things like that so but I try to get it all done as early as I can if I can and that way it's done and out of the way um, what else we've been working on this week uh, like I said I've been pretty much focused on saddles you know do 30 hours of tooling over a couple weeks that takes up quite a bit of shop time um, but we got all that that done and stuff and I've still been working on our little project video that that will land this week. Um, I've already got the dies made for the project. I've already done the pattern pack. Everything's ready to go. I even snuck it out on our Instagram story. So if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen a little story about that. It was just a quick picture there of, uh, of what the project is. And I think it's going to be I think it's going to be popular. It's something easy, something small, um, and I think it's pretty cool. We're going to make a bunch of them up out here. But you'll see that video this week. It'll drop probably mid to end of the week. Um, It'll pop up there and then we will have some material packs as well as the digital version of the pattern for that. Um, but been working on that. And then the podcast, we have not forgot about the podcast. I know we didn't have anything over the Christmas holiday. Um, we have two scheduled this week and one next week and I think two the following. I've got quite a bit of podcasts already scheduled as far as doing the interviews. So that should, we go every other week uh, posting a podcast. So that should carry us for going forward a little ways. I'm hoping the first one will come out by the end of this month and uh, it should be a good one. But we've got some really neat interviews lined up. I'm super excited to talk to those guys so and um, and I appreciate some some people have sent us uh, suggestions we do have a folder for those so if you have uh, somebody you'd like to hear on the podcast uh, by all means you know shoot us a text or, or an email and let us know who they are and we'll put them on the list of uh, potential interviews as we go forward because we've got a big big pile in that in that uh, folder and so we've got plenty of plenty of people to talk to hopefully for the next uh, year or two at least um, so we're having fun with that but yeah we're excited and outside of that all we're doing in the shop like I said is just trying to um, mainly kind of sweep up I cleaned up a little bit this morning I didn't work in here at all this weekend um, we're working on honeydew projects for mama out there at the house um, getting some things built for her that she needed built and things like that but we had an off weekend didn't have any cow shows no play days uh, we did go to the livestock show in Hallettsville to see a friend's son show his pig and he did really really well and uh, we're we're proud of him and so I went and watched that Saturday evening but outside of that we just stayed at the house and worked on projects that I've been needing to work on out there um, and it was a pretty weekend and so we were able to kind of get that done but I got in here early this morning kind of swept up and cleaned up 
got things kind of organized. I'm gonna try to finish these saddles this week, hopefully, and, uh, and get those shipped off. We've got two more we've gotta pull up and get started on those. But I'm gonna take the camera over there and we're gonna show you a little bit of where they are now and kind of what we've done and what we're planning to do next. Now we can kind of see just a little mid-build process on these two saddles that we're building. So let me grab that camera. All right, so this is our three quarter floral saddle here that we're building. So it's the ones I tooled the fenders on. So that, as you can see, the back housings here are the rear jockeys, they're tooled. The fenders will be tooled. The seat will be rough out with a full padded seat in there. So we'll have a, you know, a, a, I think we're gonna do a chocolate padded seat with a stitch pattern in there. That'll be the seat in there, rough out jockeys, and then we'll tool this front. Breast collar, stirrups, all of that'll be tooled. So it's not the most heavily tooled saddle, but it's quite a bit more than a half breed. Uh, you don't think just adding the two fenders being tooled would be that much, but uh, the fenders are large and they're probably the largest portion other than the, the skirts and the skirts really don't seem like they're that much because you only tool just around the edge basically because you can't see the rest of it with the housings and things. So I think the fenders are the biggest part to tool um, outside of just tooling the, the, the whole seat, you know, if you're doing a, a hard seat tooled. But that's this, it's a uh, roper, it's on a billy hog tree. It's an OY with leg cuts. Texas Dally number four horn on it, three and a half inch cannel. This is pretty well our standard roper setup, um, just in a hog tree. The tree we usually use is a Ray Lewis tree, but we do get some customers that request a uh, Billy Hog tree, and so we'll get those. Um, we'll, we'll build on those for sure um, without any problem. They're, they're good good trees, and, and uh, we don't have any problem using those. This other saddle is a ranch saddle. This is a Ray Lewis tree. It's a, what he calls a bull association, uh, 14 inch front. It's got a little bit more undercut to it than normal and a little thicker stock. I really, really like this tree. I've built quite a few saddles on this, um, but did an in-skirt rig as well as we did on the roper, just like we did on the roper, we did an in-skirt rig here. This one's gonna be a solid rough out. We just did a decorative line here just to add a little bit of uh, contrast just a little bit of you know decorative decorative uh, lined around there just to do something um, it'll have a hard seat in there and uh, matching breast collar and things like that exposed wood stirrups um, it's gonna be pretty neat saddle strings so it's just a straight running ranch saddle uh, once these two are done then we will go ahead and pull up the next two which the next two will be uh, ropers I believe um, I've got to look at my book, but that's what we're going to do there. But but that's how far we are. So that really where we are on these both of these saddles is the housings are mounted. They've dried over the weekend. They're where they're going to live. We need to take them off, dye our edges on those eventually. But we're going to leave those in for now and go ahead and fit our seat. So I'll cut seats out today or tomorrow, and I'll go ahead and fit those in place, let those dry, and then we'll do final cut trim work on those to make sure we got those where we want them finish the seat out, put the seat in. This saddle will go pretty fast after that. Um, we've got to put the fenders and stirrup leathers together for both of these saddles and a few of the small things, but the bulk of all the small stuff has already been done. So we, we're just uh, on the downhill slide here getting these two saddles finished up. But that's what we've been working on in the shop. We're gonna go ahead and get off here and get back to work. I appreciate you guys listening. Be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and subscribe to the Leathercraft newsletter and check out Lost Trade Podcast on Apple or Spotify. I appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all next week in the Monday morning briefing.